Pastor Keith. I'm glad you're here today. Good to be here. Hey, everybody that's uh, watching this whenever you are watching it, hopefully later this week or whatever time it made it to your YouTube, your Facebook, Instagram, wherever you're watching this, we are doing a podcast for the purpose of having a conversation about what God's doing with uh, Pastor Keith and myself and the River Church here in Searcy, Arkansas. So for those that don't know, to bring you up to speed, um, the River is the church that we attend and are privileged to get to serve at, uh, preach at, teach at, lead, and uh, just be a member of here in Searcy, Arkansas. It's been a church for 26 years. Uh, pastor Keith is the founding senior pastor and has been the senior pastor for all 26 years, uh, really going on 27, I think, if I'm thinking right. Yes, sir. Of um of its existence, and um, on Sunday, September twenty second, uh, that will change in that it is our intent that Pastor Keith will pass the baton of uh, senior leadership of the church to myself. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Jared Moss, and I've been your assistant mm-hmm. for three years, youth pastor for seven before that, and intern before that. Came here when I was fifteen, and so what God's doing um, with the leadership of the river and what he's doing in this church, not only is unique as the church is unique, but um, it's a special thing that in a spiritual father, spiritual son, kind of Paul Timothy type exchange um, that we're doing things the way we're doing. And so our heart was to take some time to actually kind of discuss that journey and talk about our heart for the church in the future and uh, for one another, and uh, maybe just give you an opportunity in a podcast style format like this to, um, to listen in and just uh, be encouraged and be a part of this process of transition in what God's doing. So for context, today we're filming, it's uh, Tuesday, September, what is the day? The 10th. Yeah, Tuesday, September 10th in the year of our Lord, 2024. <laughs> and, um, and so we're uh, just about, I guess, 10 days out, maybe 9, 11, something like that, yep. days out from this transition. And so... Um, so thanks for jumping in. So Pastor Keith, how are you today? I'm doing great. Doing great. Yes, sir. This is kind of new for you, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's I would say it's new for me too, but in 2020 and COVID, me and Michael Money bought the stuff and we 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 took our best swing at this for like three or four <laughs> episodes. And uh so if it's new, if it's yep. new to me, it's newer to you, but it's still new to both of us. Yes, but sir. um but yeah, I just want to ask you some questions yep. uh, to get the conversation started. The first question I want to ask you is, um, because here's the thing that's so interesting, is you've made such a mark on this community, being born and raised here and giving your life and ministry to this area. So many people in the central Arkansas, Jetsonia, Searcy, Arkansas region know about Keith Tomlinson. Um, but oddly enough, uh, there's a lot of people that I'm friends with around the country or places I've been and things I've done that maybe have never had the chance to meet you. And so they've only had to take my word for you, which is he's <laughs> awesome. But, uh, but I'd like for you to just take a moment and um, tell me about yourself and your story and your upbringing and um, just tell me a little bit about life. All right. Well, like I said, I, I'm from here. I was born here in Searcy and uh, grew up here. My parents uh, were both school teachers at Judsonia before the Riverview days. Judsonia Panthers, right? Judsonia Panthers. Let's go. My dad. Yeah, my dad is 91 years old, still living, and Praise God. people still call him Coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, but uh, anyway, I, so I grew up in Judsonia, and uh, and uh, graduated from there. Then eventually ended up at Harding, Harding University, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, which for context is a is a college that's still yeah. in existence here, a Church of Christ school. Yeah, here in Searcy. So yeah, great school, and uh, it's a blessing to the community. Uh, graduated from Harding in, uh, 1982 and, and headed straight to, um, seminary. Yeah. Uh, Southwestern Baptist Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. How many years were you there? Three and a half. Three and a half. Mm-hmm. And you've got the MDiv, right? Yeah. Master of Divinity, okay. sir. Didn't want to get the PhD though. Didn't want to become Dr. Thomason. Uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you settled for Archbishop instead. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> So you got the Master's in Divinity from, um, it's Southwestern, right? Yes. And uh, Theological Seminary in Fort Worth. And uh, from there, you go to, is it Pennsylvania? That's where you yes. started, right? Yeah. I've, I've pastored three churches. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first in a little community right outside of uh, Gettysburg, wow. Pennsylvania. Yeah. And uh, I was there three and a half years. Then moved back here and pastored uh, First Baptist Judsonia for eight years. Mm-hmm. And uh have been at the river ever since. Yeah. And, and what was the name of the church in Pennsylvania? Central Baptist Chapel. Central Baptist mm-hmm. Chapel. And if I remember correctly, it was kind of a newer startup church, right? Yeah. Or had been? It was a mission 
uh, a mission church and probably had about 25 or 30 people. Wow. Went, yeah. Praise God. Yeah. We Praise made it in a, a 14 by 70 trailer. So that was our church. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you really did not despise the day of small beginnings. You did not. I enjoyed it. Still hear from those folks today. That's true. And mm-hmm. uh, it was um, just a couple of years ago that one of those sweet ladies went to be with the Lord. What was her name again? That was uh, Miss. Her, her name was uh, Irene Reebok. Yeah, and she was just too much shy of one ten. One. Oh my goodness. Yeah. One hundred nine. We stayed in touch the whole. Yeah, you know, I've been gone there since nineteen ninety. Yeah. Wow. But we stayed in touch the whole time. Well, 1990, and just, you know, for context, I, I was born in 1991. So you already had, <laughs> so you already had one church in Pennsylvania yes. uh, under your belt, not under your belt, under the Lord's yep. belt that you got to serve at uh, before I was born. And then in 1990, you moved back to Judsonia. Is that right? Yes. And, uh, at and the that, beginning of 90. Yeah. At the beginning of 90. Yeah. Okay. And so then you took senior leadership of your, it was your home church. That's the church you grew up in, right? Yes, Judsonia sir. First uh, Baptist. Yeah. That's where I was. Yeah, I grew up and was licensed to ministry and ordained and everything, and uh, had the privilege to share there for, to, to serve there for eight years. Eight years. Yeah. That's incredible. Yes. And, and what's what's interesting, that amazing church has blessed so many people in this oh, community yeah. for, for, it's over 150 years now, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit over 150 years old. Which is just amazing. Yes. I know they celebrated 150 years a couple of years ago, and- there had to be thousands and thousands of people that have come through there. In oh, fact, yeah. my friend attended there when he was a teenager, and I remember going to youth a few times up in the youth loft uh, that they had at First Baptist Judsonia. Yeah. So, so you were there for eight years. Yes. And, um, and then in 1997, get the vision to start the river. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, uh, what? Really in the, the mid to late 90s, uh, just in prayer and seeking the Lord, I began to, you know, look forward to the year 2000. And I would just, in my own journal, I would write, what does the, uh, what is the church of the, the next millennium going to look like? Wow. And, uh, and really the answer I got was you just need to go back to beginnings, which is acts. Chapter right. Two, and yeah. And the church, if, if we'll go back to, to that and try to try to be that, that kind of church. Mm-hmm that uh we'll see great blessings yeah and so that that's kind of how this began to form kind of precipitated uh what would become a church plant yes called river of life yes church as well in jed sonia so um for context um you know for those that don't know i was born at uh and now it's unity hospital mm-hmm. it was white county hospital at that time yeah. I grew up in Judsonia. I attended Judsonia Elementary and Middle School. It's just yeah. it it finished as Riverview by the time I graduated. So I actually yeah. am a Riverview grad. Yeah. And uh so all these years my parents are in the same community where you're pastoring. Um but I'm not in the church that you're pastoring, but God was, you know, preparing uh, oddly enough somebody in the same place with the same roots. And so that's exciting. So I want to go back to this before we go on a little further. Can you tell me about your story of being called into ministry sure i was uh it's pretty clear um when i was 20 years old um uh, i had gone to play a softball field they used to play in cersei at uh the old airport Mm -hmm. there was an airport ball field and i had gone out there to play and long story short uh the superintendents came came to see me and and told me that uh, he had some bad news and and uh, share with me that my mother had passed suddenly. Well, I just had supper with her at six o'clock. So when, and nothing was wrong. She was 47 years old and no health problems that we knew of. Yeah. And so it was a unexpected sudden death that changed my life. And uh, it helped me to get very clear about um, the future. And I just felt like the Lord was really telling me that, uh, I want you to serve me and serve me with all your heart. Mm-hmm. And so I felt truly a calling to go into ministry. Yeah. And uh, so I, I finished my two years at Harding. Uh, I got counsel from some, from, some, from some people, and I went ahead and finished a, a business administration degree and just finished that out. And then knowing that I was going to go to seminary mm, and get okay. trained for ministry. Right. And so— uh, so that was 
80 to 82. And then, so I left here in uh, the end of 1982 and went to seminary. Gotcha. My calling came out of a, really a, a personal crisis and, and uh, a life change. Yeah. And, uh, and honestly, I've never really looked back and never questioned that. Really? You know, there's been things happen and stuff where you, you know, you wonder, but sure. But overall, like always, I've always, I've stayed true to it and believe that I've, I've done what the Lord led me to do. Yeah. Praise God. And we're, yeah. better, and we're better off for it. So you're uh, three, three churches you've pastored in 40 years of ministry. Is that right? Uh, about 38 full time. 38 in yeah. full time ministry, yeah. but 40 since you started to yeah. preach. Yeah. I was, kind of... I've always been in church all my life. Right. I never, uh, hey, can, I'm thankful can, to my... <laughs> unpack that. What is yeah. it about the preschool pen? How how accomplished well, was your you know in our in, record in in Southern Baptist churches? You know they took they kept records of everything and yeah and in Sunday school they would uh, you know they kept attendance and yeah every year they'd give a at, at the end of the year they'd give a uh, have a promotion Sunday uh huh and if you had perfect <laughs> attendance you'd get a pen yeah and. I, I've got to give God thanks for good health because I went nine years <laughs> without missing without missing a Sunday, With, without missing one Sunday. Without missing in one Sunday, I've got a, like a nine year record. Okay, so so, so <laughs> I've I've always been in church, and um, I don't. I just say that with Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. That I was I was brought up loving the 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 church, the body. Yeah, and. Uh, there's never been a time in my life where I was out. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean like, you know, for any extended time. Yes. I might miss a Sunday way here and there, but yeah, I've, I've always been, I've always been planted in a local church. Yeah. So your, your parents very much raised you faithfully. Yes. In church. All the, any problems or mistakes I've made, mm -hmm. uh, are not their fault. <laughs> <laughs> I had, I've had great, I had great, yeah, had a great mom and I've got, a, I still got a great father, a great father. You do too. Yeah. And we love him. We get yeah. to go see him too. Mr. Hayes is incredible. You said he's 90, how old? 91. 91. Yeah. Healthy and faithful. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, um, that, I, I like that. So let's talk about church a little bit. Um, people are kind of caught up on who you mm -hmm. are. Um, and your heart for the church now, they understand it. They're, you know, the, yeah, you were faithful nine years straight, not missing a Sunday in uh, Sunday school. Um, so you were definitely a church kid, First Baptist, Judd Sonia, all the way up. Go to Harding. You're going to get an accountant degree or a yes. business administration. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have a life-changing moment when you find out your mom passes away. Yes. Suddenly, between 6 o'clock and nine. Yeah, about 9 o'clock on a Saturday night. Goodness. And, and everything changed. Because eternity came within grasp, and what matters most was what was on your mind. And yeah. so you knew right then that you're called to make a difference for the Lord, and the way that you saw fit to do that is in local church ministry. Pastor three churches after seminary, this one being the third. Um, we're in an age of, um, you know, everybody, there's, there's a lot of stuff about church hurt. Um, because there obviously are natural imperfections in the church. I preach Sunday about the doctrine of ecclesiology mm -hmm. in church. And we, we don't shy away from the fact that there are things that are imperfect with the church. And that's why you have people that say, I don't go to church because there's hypocrites. And mm -hmm. I was saying Sunday, yeah, yeah. well, there's hypocrites at McDonald's yeah. and Walmart yeah. and the gym and yeah. everywhere um, that we're not claiming to be perfect. But we, we do claim that but by God's grace, we're being perfected as we yes. follow him. And so in as much as the church is imperfect, it's also the bride of Christ. Yes, And so he loves the church in spite of her imperfections, that he might wash her with the water of the word and yes. present her to himself, glorious and beautiful. So literally church is a beautiful, precious thing. We believe that God is building, that God is washing, that God is sanctifying for his own glory. And so we don't um, shy away from imperfections, but, mm -hmm. but we're thankful to be uh, people that, um, that are faithful to the church and loving and in it. And so um, pastoring is different than planting a church. So you pastored two churches previously, and you answered this a little bit. You've been writing down on your notepad, God, yeah. what's the vision for yeah. the church in the 21st century, the next millennium? Love how you said that. But if you could answer for a few moments, why, why plant a church? And, and let me qualify this. You'll hear this because new churches will plant. We've mm -hmm. had several new churches planted in Searcy in this area over the last five years. Even. Um, got friends that pastor churches in the area they planted. And every time a church is planted, people will be like, do we really need mm -hmm. another church? And I found that. It's like 
do we, you know, Slim Chickens comes to town mm-hmm. and nobody asks a question about whether or not we need more chicken fingers. Right. You know, Whataburger right. shows right. up and nobody's frustrated about that. But, um, but in a town that's in the Bible Belt, mm-hmm. especially uh, pastoring a very established generational blessed church like you had been, um, why, plant, why plant a church and why plant this church? Well, I can't answer for why other people do it, but I just know that, that the Lord, I know that I know that he led me to do this. Yeah. I have no doubt about it. Yeah. And uh, he, he, again, going back, you know, to the book of Acts, trying to pattern it after that, but he gave some very specific, what I felt like were very specific things that I wrote down mm-hmm. uh, before this was ever started and that, that I have tried to fulfill. And uh, so it was in my heart. Mm-hmm. And, and the Lord opened the door for it to happen. And so uh, I obeyed. Yeah. And, uh, and I don't have regrets about that. Praise God. Mm-hmm. So in short, you planted this church because you felt God leading you to do it. No other reason. Absolutely. And can you think of any other reason that it would be wise to plant a church than that reason? Uh, no, it has to be, uh, a, a person has to know that it's, you know, the, being led by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Now, yeah. God works. I think he does. I love all churches. You know, there's traditional churches that God is working mightily through. Amen. Yeah. But he, he does work through new works, whether mm. it's here in Circe, Judsonia, or whether it's uh, in Africa. Yeah. He works through new. New works. Yeah. God, there's a harvest. There's a need. Mm. And, and each church uh, can reach people that another church might not be able to reach. Right. So, yeah. uh, if it's led by the spirit, it needs to happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. You know, I've heard it said before <clears throat> that it takes all types of churches to reach all types of people. Yeah. Um, obviously qualified that they preach the Bible, worship Jesus, believe he's the only way to the father and you know, all those, all those, uh, essentials, but given those essentials, there's a broad range of types of churches. Yeah. Um, but if God calls a man, to plant yeah. a church, then it can reach a people that perhaps another type of church is not reaching. And yeah. Would you say that that's a pretty accurate statement or approach? Yeah. And, and, because, and with uh, this specifically, uh, I just, God was, I felt like he was really clear with me about what he wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. And that was to plant a church that was built on, on freedom in worship mm-hmm. and, and, um, Small groups, yeah. Or yeah. in Acts, it would be meeting in the temple, house to house. Yeah, that's how the Book of Acts frames it. Yeah, uh, we called it celebration, kind of a celebrating type church. Yeah, uh, celebration cell is kind of how we how we wrote it down. Yeah, and so let's <clears throat> let's get into this a little mm-hmm. bit. In fact, these first questions are maybe more primer questions, mm-hmm. but obviously, you know, we said at the outset that the goal of talking is to let everybody in yeah. on the conversation of the river Mm -hmm. and our history, our, uh, perhaps unique characteristics, um, our heart as pastors and what God's doing with us. And so we can take a little bit more time maybe to get into these next topics. Um, but, um, stepping into what you just said about this church, what, what in your opinion makes the river unique? That's a great question. Uh, first of all, the, the church is the body of Christ. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a gathering of people filled with the Holy Spirit. Just like a human body is a body with a spirit, mm-hmm. so is the church. Yeah. And even though every human being in many ways, we're all just, we're very much alike. Mm-hmm. We've all got different DNA. Right. Yeah. We've got a, we're, we're very unique. Yeah. And so every single local fellowship, every church, is different. Yeah. We can have this same doctrine, teaching, right. uh, very similar things, how we do things. And yet <laughs> everyone is unique because it's made up of those unique people. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, I believe that the river is unique in that we have stayed true. Mm-hmm. I believe to what God told us to do. Yeah. Uh, when he gave the vision for this thing. And what, what is that? Well, like I said a moment ago, it was to be a, a church built on um, 
you know, meeting, meeting together in a large gathering and then in small groups sure. yeah. or in acts, the temple and house to house. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, it was to be kingdom minded mm-hmm. and never wanted to put out any kind of, never wanted people to think we were anti denominational yeah. people. Right. We made that very clear. Never were. Yeah. But we, we, I wanted to be specific and that this will be a, a church. Yeah. A local fellowship that advances the kingdom of God. Right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, God's kingdom is what we are trying to be about. Yeah. And uh, so we've, that's how we how we approach missions and everything we do. Sure. So uh, the third thing was to be balanced. Mm-hmm. And uh, what that mainly meant was to be a church, a church that was very word based. Right. Uh, built on the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. And yet also believing very strongly in the Holy Spirit. Yes. We yeah. need both. Okay. We yeah. need we need the foundation of the word and yet we need the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that's that's what is revealed in the book of Acts. Yes. You can't get away from that. Right. That's what the church is. Yeah. It's a group of people filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. But the apostles never got away from the word. Yeah. Matter of fact, in Paul's last letter to Timothy, Second Timothy. This man moved in all the spiritual gifts, and yeah, yet, in yeah. the end, right before his uh, death, Paul is telling Timothy, yeah. hey, be strong in the Word, preach the Word. Yes. The Holy Scriptures have been given. They're God-breathed and profitable. And, and so this man's last words were talking about the Scripture. Yeah. So we've tried to be very strong in the Word, Yeah. and, and we, we preach the Word, we teach the Word, and we don't— uh, we, we don't shy away from topics yeah. that are in the Word. Yes. And yet we rely on the presence and power, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's balance. We need both. Right. And, uh, and also with that, we've tried to be balanced in uh, kind of the purposes of the church, mm-hmm. meaning worship mm-hmm. uh, or exalting God. Right. Uh, then being founded you know, on the Word, like we said. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, encouragement or ministry and evangelism. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, there may be more, but I see four clear purposes in the church. And many times a church will be strong in one and weak in the other. Yeah. And so we've tried to be really intentional about being strong in all the purposes of the church. And, and those purposes, again, worship, instruction. Yeah. Fellowship, yeah, and evangelism, yeah, yeah. For those watching, we uh, in our teaching, we try to we try to use a, a little acronym uh, using the word wife, mm-hmm. and uh, and break that down to saying here's the four purposes, which is worship, instruction, fellowship, yeah, and evangelism, yeah. It's you know, it's exalting, it's being founded, mm-hmm. it's uh, fellowship, loving one another in the body, and then reaching out, yeah, and evangelism to the lost, yeah. So that third thing about balance is word and spirit, but also in, uh-huh. in how you carry out and fulfill the purposes of the church. Yeah, I love that. And then the fourth, if I'm not mistaken, the fourth thing that you wrote down, you felt the Lord was giving vision for this church is the word interstate. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. You want to unpack that? For a, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. This is a fun, I mean, it's a fun it, it, story. It's kind of, it is because, you know, I, when I wrote that down, I, I would drive by and the property that we, you know, where we're located. Yeah. Uh, and I could see a church there. I could drive by there and see a Just church see setting it. there. Yeah. And so, uh, so when we when we planted, one of the main things was to be. I th- this thing's got to be on the interstate. Yeah. Of course, that's kind of tongue in cheek because it's really not an interstate. Well, it's it's uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't it Highway 67, 167? That's North, correct. Right. That's yeah. that's the technical. It's a highway. That is the highway. Yeah. But for growing growing up in Arkansas, a four lane highway. Is an interstate, right? <laughs> so anyway, anyway it's, it's true because our town, ta- I mean, Cersei is like, what, 23,000 people. It's the county seat, but we are right over the Little Red River. And oddly enough, I think we're outside of city limits for yeah. both. But, you know, if we were geographically located in one of the towns, it would be Judsonia. Judsonia is, what, 1,700 now, 1,800? Almost, almost 2,000. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Uh, I need to give it more credit. So, yeah, yeah so you're right. Highway, Highway yeah. 67, 167 North was interstate oh, in, in yeah. Judd Sonia talk. When it was, I remember when the, it was built, 
Okay, I remember when the highway was built. So oh wow, really? Yeah, it was like everybody, you know, they're putting the interstate in. So oh. yeah. <laughs> well, what's funny about that now? About oh five years ago or so. Uh, uh, it's been longer than that. It's Jerry, probably six. It's always longer. We were going through a going through kind of a hard period. Yeah. And coming to church one night. A Wednesday night. A, it was remember. a Wednesday night. And I remember there was a sign setting right out in front of, of our property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on, on the uh, Highway 67, 167. Yeah. And I almost knew like what it was. Really and so uh, Jared can confirm this, but I, after service, I got him and we ran around and, and uh, shined and the, the Honda lights. It, it was, yeah, it was covered with a it some was, kind of tarp. And it was raining that night, too. It was raining and I Dark. hit the lights on it and it said future I-57. I-57. And so... And it was uh, it was right in front of the three crosses that are at the end of the corner of our property. Exactly. And I remember you saying, "Right in front of the yeah, crosses." Yeah. And Jared, I was like, Jared Let's started go! Screaming, started playing the drums and uh, screaming. And, yeah. Uh, but it was a it was a good moment because it's like, you know, uh, you can't make that up. No, it no. It literally is going to be it. It is going to be an interstate. Yeah. And so. Um, now at this point of my ministry, looking at it, you know, Hey, did we, did we build a church that celebrates God? Yes. And it meets in small group. We did that. Yeah. Have we, have we advanced God's kingdom? We have. Yeah. Here locally and all over the world. All over the world. Yes. Have we stayed true to balance? Mm -hmm. Uh, do we preach the word and are we open? We've got an open sign on our church to the Holy Spirit. Right. We do. Yeah. And, um, uh, and now we have a future, you know, now we have an interstate. So yeah, I can go ahead and step aside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that's funny, but honestly, like it, it does have to feel, it does have to feel like you've pleased the father and it's job well done because, you know, even for me, I, you okay. You're saying step aside. Okay. But I'm stepping up and stepping in. Yeah. And we have had seasons and trials and moments that were very difficult to navigate. And I, I personally have had moments where I've been distraught and discouraged. Yeah, sure. And like, I, I don't know how to say this, like literally been, I would wake up and think like, God, is there a future? Yeah. And I can drive still to this day. I can drive on that highway and cross the river on the way to church. And I can still to this day, see a sign in front of the crosses on this property. And the first word on that sign is future. Yeah. I, I've never been one to, future. I've never been future. one to look for signs but you'll take one if you can get one but if you can get one <laughs> well and, and what's funny i mean I, someone will fact check me on this and that's fine because i'm probably wrong but to to my knowledge there are probably because that's going to go all the way to missouri right that's the plan uh i think so i think or it goes to missouri maybe and connects, Cal southern illinois i think one of the but it's going yeah. in the direction of st louis yes and and whatnot um but as far as i can tell you can drive either direction on that stretch and see that sign, future I-57, maybe three to four times on the entire highway in both directions. Yes. It's like, like there's one heading, um, I don't know, like somewhere towards Little Rock that like you can see it. Yeah. Um, there's one headed toward like somewhere towards Jonesboro. You can see it like, like a, a future I-57. But my, my point is out of hundreds of miles of that highway, one of those signs happened to be placed right in front of our church. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, we're not one of those that's yeah. always looking for signs, but yeah. you'll take one if God gives you'll it to take you, it. too. And it is a sign that you, you did what God told you to do. And for me, as a young man, it's a sign that God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Yeah. And the best is yet to come because, you know, Jesus is coming. doesn't mean that yes, things sir. won't get harder, but, but there's a future. There's a future for this house of worship, and that's encouraging. Yeah. So I, I, here's the truth. We could spend an entire hour on each one of those vision items. Um, we don't have, you know, four hours, but for a few minutes, I'd like to talk about this because I think that what mm -hmm. makes the river unique is, well, it is what it is. It what make, it's what makes it unique. Um, Sunday night, actually, we had a group of young adults at our house mm -hmm. um, and we call it a young leaders forum. And the reason I called it that is because we did worship, we prayed, but instead of me just talking, I asked the room, what drew you to the river? What makes it unique? What are you excited about? And we had 18 to 30 year olds uh, and, uh, um, and there's people from all over the country, literally that are in the room, mm -hmm. which is ironic, but uh, just interesting to see. But 
But I asked them and it was interesting to get their responses and the responses are very consistent. So you're talking about people that have never gone through a connect class, actually, some of them. Yeah. Some of them have not set through the vision 101 back in the day or yeah. 2020 <laughs> vision and all right. the iterations that we come up with. Yeah. But they were able to tell me what drew them to this church and what they love about it. Um one young lady that started coming recently from Hebert that's been there three or four times. She was in the, she was in the room that night and she could nod her head along Mm -hmm. in agreement about what she loves about the church. And they are, they are basically real back to me what you just said you wrote down in 97. So, so we don't have to question whether or not God did it. He's done it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but let's talk about this idea of celebration worship for a second. You know, it takes all types of churches, reach all types of people. There are churches that are a cappella and don't use instruments, mm-hmm. and God uses them. There right. are churches that have pianos, but no drums or guitars. God uses them. There are churches that use hymns. There are churches that have a full band, but um, they just they sing. Maybe it's more liturgical. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's there's us, and um, you know we talk about this. That I, I told the room Sunday night. Sometimes the thing that makes me a little weird, like, am mm-hmm. I are we too extra? And it's it is what it is. The yeah. thing that sometimes I wonder, are we too overboard? Is the thing that some people uh, uh, draws them. So, mm-hmm. so you can't ever question it, but you know, for example, on a Sunday morning at the river, you come in and you'll experience what I experienced mm-hmm. when I was 15. I caught the whoosh. <laughs> you come in and everybody's shouting and clapping and singing. And some people are jumping up and down in the front and dancing. And, you know, before the Lord, um, we, we want to be decently and in order, but also mm-hmm. free in worship. But when I think of celebration, I think of that kind of thing, you know, um, I, I'll get up there to transition worship and I'll, I'll, I'll say familiar verses in actual scripture. Clap your hands, all you people. Sure. Shout to God for the voice of triumph. You know, for great is the Lord and greatly to be. Why would I clap? Why would I shout? Because God's great and he's worthy. You know, um, you clap and shout at a football game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you you yep. clap and shout at a yep. wedding. You clap and yep. shout when things are exciting. And, and we believe God likes it. We believe that it, it's Psalm 150, praise the Lord with a harp, with stringed instruments, with cymbals, with loud clanging cymbals, it even says, you know, so um, decent and in order, but give God the celebration that he's, uh, that he deserves. That's mm-hmm. really who we are. And, mm-hmm. and it may not be for everybody, but it's, it's, it's not for them. And that, I yeah. think that's the fundamental point is that we believe that church first and foremost is not for people, it's for the Lord. Mm-hmm. So it's not that we're trying to be superior, but we are worshiping God the way that we believe that he's called us to worship him. And, um, and, and, and it's like that. Can you talk about that a little bit? How that, is that what you envisioned when you well, started yeah. the church? Yeah. The book of Psalms is the song book of the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And if you read it, you see that even then and there, they, they celebrated. Yeah. They were looking forward to Christ. Yeah. They did not have a revelation of wow. him. Of him yeah. Co- you know, he had not been there yet. Yeah, you're right. We look back. How much more, mm. how much more should the body of Christ celebrate yeah. the fact that Christ has come? Yeah. He died for our sins. He rose from the dead. Yeah. It's the greatest victory yeah. of all time. Yeah. He ascended, poured out the Holy Spirit, and he's coming again. We're well, not gathering yeah. for a funeral. Right. Yes. We're not gathering. <laughs> It makes no sense. Yeah. We celebrate the the goodness, the greatness of God with the revelation of what Christ has done for us. Yeah. That's why we do it. Yeah. And and we don't do anything that's not in scripture. Yeah. Whether it's clapping or yeah. instruments or, you know, I respect other people that don't worship that way, but that's how we do it. Right. And we uh I'm glad we do. Yeah. There's freedom in it. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think about it, I'm like it, 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 we've talked about this. You and I mm-hmm. are both are both Razorback fans. I yeah. think you've gotten more delivered of it at this stage of your yeah. life than yeah. I have. Because last week I was said I'm I'm I had to prepare a sermon. I said <laughs> I'm probably going to watch that game, and I meant live. Yeah, You're like I'm probably going to record it and go to the woods. So I know that <laughs> I know that God's sanctifying you yeah. enough to figure out what the outcome is, so you don't get worked up. I may or may not have gotten worked up at the very end, and I'm like, come on, Jared. Yeah, but um. But we've both been to Razor. In fact, yeah. we've been to Razorback games together. Yeah. I was thinking about it uh, uh, this week. I think we went to, I think we saw the miracle on Markham together when I was a teenager. Yeah. You took me. Um, I can't remember if that was the <laughs> game, but uh, but my point is, uh, well, no, this is my point. I, I remember at that game hugging men I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> with, that's with, some true fellowship. 
<laughs> I remember that ball. I think Casey Dick hurled it to yeah. the back quarter of the yeah. end zone with time expiring. Yeah. And I think I think it was London Crawford. I can't remember. Yeah. Catches it. The place erupts. And I remember hugging mid. I don't yeah, know. For sure. It- and no one was an introvert. Yeah. Everyone's hands lifted. They're shouting. Yeah. They've got razorbacks on their head. And and you've talked about this for ye- from the time I was a teenager. Remember you you up exhorting people in the church and worship, and asking the question: Why is it you can go into the stadium yeah. with a hog hat and lift your hands on Saturday? Saturday, but you come into the house of God on Sunday, and we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. And it's this. And all of a sudden, everybody's an introvert. All of a sudden. And uh, so it's. Uh, I just personally, I decided, you know, my, I'm going to worship the Lord, my God. Yeah. And I'm going to do it with all my heart. Yeah. And David and all dance with all his might. And, um, and uh, the sports and all that can take a back seat. Amen. Yeah. So it's not that that's wrong. To yeah. Do what people do, but, uh, our, our number one devotion, mm-hmm. our worship, we are, we are, we were created to worship God. Yeah. You know, a lot of people wonder, why am I here? Yeah. You know, why was I, you know, why was I, we are created yeah. to worship the Lord, our God. Yes. And whether that's in the quietness of our own uh, home or yeah. in church or in a stadium. Yes. Uh, we are to worship him. It says with all of our heart. Yes. Yeah. You can't get around that. What does that look like? All. All of our heart. Well, and, and, and when God, uh, it's like, you know, when. When and I'm not saying there aren't different personality types. Yeah, I mean, we sure. understand and get that. You know, yeah. I I jump up and down. Yeah. You know, and and I remember a guy came in one time and and there was mm-hmm. some of our youth in the corner. This is years ago that were jumping up and down. Mm-hmm. He thought we had gotten together and coordinated. Yeah. He's like, it's cool how y'all got that thing going together. I'm like, we don't do that. I, yeah. And I, I tell my testimony that, you know, I came to the river. I was 15 years old, um, 2008. A friend brought me here, invited mm-hmm. me, um, and then I got in the youth group and got mm-hmm. involved. And um, I, I had. You know, I'd gone to church as a kid. My dad took me to church. My mom took me to church. We had been out for a couple of years, though. And I remember my friend, uh, Jason Wilkins is his name. And he, he, we were playing in a band together. And he said, um, hey, do you go to church anywhere? I was like, oh, not right now. He's like, you want to come? I'm like, sure. And uh, so I remember him honking his horn and calling me mm-hmm. at like 9 or no, it would have been like <laughs> 8.52 in the morning on a Sunday in my yard to <laughs> ask me to come get in his Honda Civic to go to church with him. Yeah. And so... I said, oh, I had a late night. I'm tired. And, and at that time, he had a foundations class at 9 a.m. at the church. And, and his future father-in-law is one of our elders was teaching that class. And so he could have just left me. But he's like, no, man, come get in the car. I'm like, okay, fine. So I, I went and got in a Civic and we showed up late and walked into foundations and then service at 10. And, and this was all new to me. But, um, but I got involved in the youth group because they invited me to one of those life groups you talked about. Yeah. You know, we got celebration mm-hmm. and cell. Mm-hmm. So it's one big body that yep. gathers to worship. And that it's small groups of believers, mm-hmm. uh, rather than just more class and stuff, yeah. which nothing wrong with that. Yeah. We need more of that. But but you you had a vision of authentic relationship. It says in the book of Acts that they met in the temple and house to house, mm-hmm. eating bread together, fellowshipping, and yep. God was adding to them. Those are being mm-hmm. saved. So I got a double dose the first day because after service, Jason was like, what are you doing tonight? I was like, uh, I don't know. He said, we have this thing called life group. You want to come? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll come. And so, and so I come that night and mm-hmm. I go to a house with believers and we sing and we um, talk about the sermon and we pray for people that have prayer requests. I mean, I've never seen this. I mean, people that are everything from, I've got a test this week that I'm mm-hmm. scared I'm going to pass to, I've, I, I just got a bad diagnosis and, and, and we'd lay hands on people and pray for them like the Bible says and encourage people. And then we'd eat and take communion and, and uh, all in one day, first day, that was my experience. Right. Um, but this was all new to me. It was, it was new to me. And uh, I remember though, being attracted to the culture of worship that was there and, and that we'll celebrate, we'll lift our hands, we'll worship, we'll sing to God, we'll praise, we'll, um, you know, all this, but, uh, but, but my, my testimony, a lot of root, a lot of it that next year, after I got involved in the youth group, we went to a conference, youth conference and I got saved at that youth conference and, um, baptized mm-hmm. that next Monday night at the river at, at church. And, um, but I remember, and you've heard me tell this, and many people, if they've been to the church, have heard me tell this testimony, but I was delivered from depression, mm-hmm. um, suicidal ideation, um, a massive insecurity. There was a lot, there just was a lot, there was a lot that God did in me. I, I used to have a major fear of people. I could not only not talk in front of people, but I couldn't talk to people. Like, you know, if we went through the McDonald's drive through I, I would duck because I couldn't talk to a stranger. Yeah. If we went to the convenience store, I couldn't go in there and buy my dad a Coke because I couldn't talk. I was, all this, right? 
So I got completely set free of that. But one of the things that got me set free from that is I saw people dancing um, at that youth conference mm-hmm. before the Lord, not in front of everybody mm-hmm. where everybody could see my distraction, but up in the corner yeah. on yeah. their own, just them and the Lord dancing and crying and had their hands lifted singing. And something about that resonated with me. Like, I want that freedom of not caring what people think. Yeah. That, that freedom that I would go on to find out that David had in the Bible who danced before the Lord with all his might. And even his own wife criticized him like, Hey, you should mm-hmm. be more dignified. He's like, well, I'll be more undignified than this. And so <laughs> when I got set free of that, I, I, I mean, I know I'm going on a little bit of a tangent here, but this is the reason we're doing a podcast. Yeah. It's not a sermon because we can talk, but, um, but I'm, all I knew to do was dance before the Lord. Yeah. You know, some people ask, why do you jump? I'm like, because I can. Why do you lift your hands? Cause, cause they used to have center blocks and the spirit attached to them because they were more afraid of what you thought than what yeah. God thought. It's like now, like a child that runs to his father with his hands lifted and yeah. just wants to be held. Like that's, that's my expression of worship back to the Lord on Sunday mornings. You know, we do cry. We, we, I had a guy mm-hmm. tell me Sunday night at that thing. He said that I'd never seen pastors cry before when they preach. And I realized it's your heart and I'm not trying to be self aggrandizing. Mm-hmm. This is a testimony of what the Lord has done right now. I'm thinking of Ezra, Nehemiah, when they laid the foundation of the temple, it says the men that saw the first temple wept. It, it, it just, I believe that when the Lord inhabits the praises of his people and people really cast aside their preferences and what other people think, and they give God praise due his name, he makes his presence among them. Yeah. And there's weeping, there's rejoicing, there's, there's, there's laughter, there's joy, yeah. there's happiness because, because he's alive and he's yeah. in the room. And um, I don't know, I, I just, I, I guess I came in on the fruit of that because God used you to start this church and it wasn't always like that. Right. I mean, that's not how it no. started. No, I mean, it, we kind of grew it, grew in that because, um, uh, you know, it was new to a lot of people. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm glad we're there now. Yeah. I'm glad that we truly have a freedom to worship God. Yeah. In order. Yes. We do it in order. Yes. But, uh, but it that exalts his name, glorifies his name. Yes. It's a powerful thing. And 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 next to that, you know, um, you talked about being balanced in word and spirit. Mm-hmm. So we do believe in the present power and ministry of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, but we've talked about it before. It's kind of like you have the license to drive, but there's still stoplights mm-hmm. and yellow lights. Yeah. And there are some churches that that are that are like, you know, if we can just get the spirit to moving, mm-hmm. then we can cast off restraint basically. And then there's other churches that are like, no, we teach the word and that that's it and that kind of thing. And we do believe in that balance, that there's that there's freedom, but there's order. Um, and that said, when it comes to the word, I think as I've prayed through the future of this church, n- number one, n- nothing that we're talking about, celebration, cell, kingdom balance, mm-hmm. interstate, none of that's gone. And none of it is erased. And none of it was, and, and none of that was, mm-hmm. oh, that was the last generation's vision because it's Bible. Yeah. Like, I mean, we, we yeah. it's, it's scripture. It's, it's, we believe God's mm-hmm. heart for his church. So we absorb that in this new generation. Um, and, and we're, and, and one thing that I'm trying to do is, is clarify what we emphasize from that. You know, I heard Frank, uh, Pastor Frank DiMazio say one time that God gives a man a mantle to match the darkness in his generation. Mm-hmm. So, 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 so every generation, one generation praises your works to another, has its own unique challenges. And so as I'm looking in 2024, over the next 25 to 30 years, or mm-hmm. however long should the Lord tarry, and I'm called to serve here, what I'm noticing is a, a deviation from the scriptures as the authority of the word of, uh, of, of truth, mm-hmm. as the source of authority for truth. Um, and a lot of massive deconstruction of people casting off biblical restraint and mm-hmm. leaving the church. And so I believe that we are what some people call a presence driven church. What that really means mm-hmm. is we worship and God inhabits the praises of his people and the spirit of the Lord. Mm-hmm. We're a dwelling place for the presence of God and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom, there's liberty mm-hmm. and whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So we believe that a lot of the answers to the problems of man are found in the presence of God and the presence of God will always be found in the place where corporate um, authentic worship is going forth to the Lord. That said, that said, right next to it, word and spirit, mm-hmm. right, is an is an emphasis. I believe what God wants for the river over the next generation is a understood, consistent emphasis on the Holy Bible, the sixty six books of the yep. Holy Bible, as the objective source for truth and authority in the lives of people. Yes. Crystal clear, completely unequivocally. And like you said earlier, Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Mm -hmm. And, and 
what I see sometimes, and I, I hate to say that this is unique to the river. Mm -hmm. Um, there are plenty, let me just say there are plenty of churches that are preaching the Mm -hmm. word, right? Sure. Um, and that maybe preach different styles, Mm -hmm. you know, some preach topically, some preach exegetically, Mm -hmm. some preach verse by verse, and we believe God uses all of it. Um, but what are you seeing? You know, David said, I've been young and now I'm old Mm -hmm. and this is what I've seen. Righteous haven't forsaken that. What are you seeing trending in the church that's not healthy when it comes to this? And, and, and what does it mean to you for us to stay faithful to preaching the word as authority? Uh, great question. Uh, it just seems like there's been a, a trend in a lot of places um, to try to make the, try to be relevant to yeah. culture where we're trying to, almost like we want the, the world and, or the culture to accept us. Yeah. And so sometimes there might be some compromise with how we, how we go about saying things from the word. Yeah. And we're not to do that. Right. The scripture's clear. Paul said, do not be conformed to this world. Yeah. Do not be fashioned by this world. Wow. That's but right. But be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Yes. So that we can know the will of God. But I don't think we have to make the word relevant. I don't think we have to uh, try to make it where it's easier for people to understand or, mm-hmm. or, or easier to kind of digest. Our ministry, our mandate from Scripture is to preach the word. Right. To preach it in a convincing way, to preach it where uh, we have confidence in it, yeah. where we exhort, where we rebuke. Yeah. You know, you don't want, you know, you don't want to always be rebuking all the time, yeah. but it says it, Paul said it plainly to Timothy, you need all, you need to, you need to Convince, exhort, exhort, rebuke, encourage with all people, lift people up. But yeah. also when people are in error or they're drifting, yeah. there needs to be a, a loving rebuke. Right. It says it all. Yeah. And, and we do not, I think what I'm trying to say is we do not need to be apologetic yeah. in this hour Yeah, for the word of God. Yes. We don't, I mean, it's right. Yeah. Yeah. I am 100% sure that the word of God, the Holy scriptures yes. are correct. Yeah. They're God breathed. Every single word. And, uh, we don't, we just, we need to <laughs> simply preach the word yeah. and teach the word. And it will help people to get saved, yes. to come to Christ, yeah. and to grow in yeah. the maturity in Him, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And um, so I think, um, I think there are trends that have come in. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's always been that. You look at the, the, the seven churches in Revelation, it, it kind of spells out yeah. some of the spiritual viruses that were already yeah. infiltrating the church. Yes. And those were new then, but they're not. I mean, they're still happening today. Yeah. False grace stuff. And, uh, yeah. For the record, by the gr- I'm saved by grace through faith. Yes. I don't have any doubt about grace. that. Not of works, but, uh, there is a Jude talks about, a uh, that men would come in and twist or pervert. Yeah. The grace of God and, and turn, turn, turn it turning into, into lewdness. lewdness. Right. So those are trends that have, that have come in and, and it, it will trend towards, um, uh, uh liberalism or universalism yeah. very easily. Yeah. And so which for those that may not understand, yeah. that's the idea that everybody's just going to heaven. Yeah. Period. Bottom line, we we have a really clear and simple mandate yeah. as ministers. Yes. And that is to preach God's word. Yeah. To be convinced. We've got to be convinced yeah. about it. Yeah. Like whether it's creation. Yeah. Whether it's the gender questions that are coming up. Yeah. Those are all spelled out in scripture. Those are not political issues. Yeah. yeah. Those are spiritual issues that 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 people are dealing with every day. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 we believe the scripture addresses every single thing yes. that's going on in a in the world and especially in America today. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think about I, like you said, it's nothing new. And mm-hmm. and when we we said that, we'd be like, oh yeah, you know, Paul told Timothy, preach the word for the time yeah. will come. Yeah. That people with itching ears, yeah. in, in other words, they, they got to get a scratch, yeah. Yeah. right? And their itch may be lust itch, it, and yeah. a lust itch, or it may be a perversion itch, or it may be a greed itch, or it may be, you know, mm-hmm. we don't know. Or, or yeah. just a, I want to do me itch, you yeah. know? And they will heap up, the Bible said, for themselves teachers 
who will basically tickle their ears by telling them fables. So that you know, I we live in that day. You can get a podcast yeah. to tell you whatever you want to hear. You can get a counselor to tell you what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. You can get a pastor at a church, yeah, to tell you whatever you want to yeah. hear. Or, or maybe not to tell you whatever you want to hear, but at least not to talk about the things you don't. Yeah. And and so we believe in preaching the entirety of God's word. You know, it's kind of like, you know, if you got a plate, you've got meat, you've got greens, you've got mm-hmm. mashed potatoes, you got biscuit, mm-hmm. and you have dessert. You've got it all. But, you know, we, we want a well-balanced diet of the word, of the mm-hmm. gospels, of the Old Testament, of the prophets, of, of, the, um, um, of the Pentateuch, the, you know, yeah. the initial books yeah. of the Bible, the five books of the Bible. And it's older than Paul's day. You know, the devil in the garden, what did he say when Eve was like, well, we're not supposed to touch that tree? He said, did God really say? Yeah. And that's the question of the serpent to this day. Did God really say? Yeah. Was that? Was that really God that authored Romans or was that just, yeah. was that just, have we evolved? Yeah. Have we moved on yeah. beyond yeah. Romans one or first Corinthians five, you know, uh, in, in issues of sexuality. And like you said, gender, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It, it, I mean, I, not, you know, respect to people that are struggling in their identity. You know, we, we want to be respectful. I know it's difficult and, and we've got a lot of, there's a lot of lies out there. That's why it's difficult. But Jesus said, you will know the mm-hmm. truth and the truth will make you free. And, and it does say God made them male and female. And I, I, I'm serious. I wonder how many preachers and pastors will say these things this specifically, unapologetically, mm-hmm. in love, right? Mm-hmm. Speak the truth in love. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, the Bible says that if you know the truth, the truth will make you free. So if they're not hearing the truth, how can they be free? Yeah. And, and so it's, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, uh, what's the story in the Old Testament where, um, where the king got all the prophets to line up and they were told to tell the king what he wanted to hear. And then the prophet Micaiah, yeah. like he, he kind of joked like, oh yeah, go to war, God's <laughs> with you. And the king knew, he's like, you're lying to me. He's yeah. like, no, actually I saw that if you go to war, then your whole army will be slaughtered and you'll be taken captive because, because God's not with you. Yeah. And I remember the, the king in the Bible, he says, I hate this prophet. He never says good things about me. And I'm like, but if he's telling you the truth, then then why can't you receive that? And that's the day we're in. It's like, there's so yeah. many people that are afraid to offend people because we don't want to offend people because then they'll leave the church. And if they leave the church, we can't keep doing church the way that we want to do it, you know? And, 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 and by God's grace, for whatever reason, I, I think that, I mean, not a lot of reason you've taken a lot of hits, a lot of pushback, you know, people walking out, you know, at, at certain <laughs> times, but, but we have a platform that I think God's given us to, to again, speak the truth in love, but nevertheless speak the truth. Because sure. I do believe that telling the truth is in and of itself love. Yeah. You know, it's like I've used the analogy that if your kid's in the highway and they're playing and there's a semi coming, you can be like, oh, you're so cute, but could you come over here? Oh, you're so cute, but, you know, but don't offend them. Or you can snatch them out, you know, mm-hmm. and, and maybe somebody would be like, hey, you, you know, you, you, weren't, you weren't soft enough with your snatching your kid out of the way <laughs> of the semi. It's like, well, you know, they'll just have to, when they grow up and they have their own kids, they'll understand, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I. I, I, I kind of, this, I, well, I said it earlier. I think this is the mark of darkness in my generation. Did God really say, and it, and, and it hurts me uh, to think that preachers and pastors wouldn't, wouldn't preach the truth, the whole truth, mm-hmm. right? The whole Bible, um, the full counsel of God, as the apostle Paul said in the, in the scriptures, um, uh, uh, under mm-hmm. the guise of loving them, you know, um, people say, we, just, we don't need to, do, we know we just need to be like Jesus. Mm-hmm. And they forget that they killed Jesus, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. he was so loving that they killed him mm-hmm. for telling the truth, you know, or how about John the Baptist, who Jesus said is the greatest man ever born of a woman. Mm-hmm. And why did he die? He died. He was beheaded because he was willing to point out the sexual sin of a political leader. Yes. You know? Yeah. So, so if, if John was great the greatest man ever born of a woman, according to the man whose opinion counts. Yeah. But the people thought he was disposable for the king because he didn't go along with mm-hmm. the political narrative of his day. And he was willing to talk about sin because he loved that man enough. Then, then who are mm-hmm. we and what are we called to do? You know, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever well, your thoughts are on well, that. Well, we are called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're called to preach the word of truth. Look, God, God is truth. Yes. Jesus said, I am the truth. Yes. Right? Yes. It's the a spirit, person. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. Mm-hmm. The scripture is the word of truth. Right. It is our privilege and responsibility 
to proclaim the truth. Yes. In all the in in all these things. Yes. And and not to be afraid. And right. not to be afraid of people. Mm-hmm. Um, there needs to be this is opinion. Yeah. But there needs to be a uh, we need a baptism of the fear of God. Yes. Uh, yes. I feel like this nation, especially, that we've lost the fear of the Lord. Which is the beginning of wisdom. And and, and we're more afraid of what people think right. than than what the Lord thinks. Right. And uh, so if if we stay true to the scripture yeah. and to preaching his word and, and do it with humility and knowing that we we don't know it all. Yeah. Let me say this. I was thinking as, you know, all these years of ministry, I believed uh, that the scriptures were uh, inspired, inerrant when I started. Yeah. Yeah. After 38 years, I'm more convinced. Really? I am more convinced. You know, there, you know, there are scriptures you don't understand. I think all of us would say, hey, I don't really understand exactly what Paul meant with that. Yeah. Or even Peter said that. Yeah, Peter yeah. <laughs> at the end of his, you know, epistle said, you know, Paul wrote some things that are kind of hard to understand. And, and Peter yeah, said they twist yeah, his stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're doing. So yeah. there are things we admit that, you know, people ask me questions. Sometimes I say, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> but but I don't have doubts about it. Right. The answers will come. Yeah. And the scripture is right. Yeah. I'm I'm so convinced of that. Yeah. If I wasn't, and I would I would say this to all ministers. If you're not convinced of that alone. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Wh- why, why be in the ministry? Right. If, if you're not convinced. Yeah. That the Holy Scriptures are inspired. Yes. They are relevant. Yes. They don't have to be made relevant. Yeah. For today. Yeah. I heard a, a mentor of mine, Pastor Joel Stock, still say one time he was teaching in, about ministers of the mm-hmm. word and he said, um, he said, every tradesman has mm-hmm. a tool. Yeah. He said, carpenters have a hammer. Doctors yeah. have a stethoscope. He said, ministers have the Bible. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's, that's, that's what's in our tool belt. And so, yeah, if you break with that. Yeah, and I believe it. It's, uh, you know, uh, it's the book of life. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it speaks to every issue yes. that, we, uh, that we deal with. Yeah. And so, you know, one thing that we do here at the river, uh, and I'm sure... A lot of churches do this, but we really encourage people to read their Bibles every, every single day. day. Yes. And hopefully to journal, to write things down. What's what do you feel like God's saying to you through yeah. the scripture? Right. And uh that's that's a way to really grow in it. Right. Uh, uh, to grow in the word yourself with you know, you hear sermons and teachings and stuff, but right. you can grow a lot yeah. by by reading it, thinking on it, yes. praying through it, and writing it. Yeah. And and you over a over a lifetime, you really learn it, and you you learn about God. You learn about His heart. Yeah, and uh, you come to know Him through His Word. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and I would encourage any any like pastor or leader or mm-hmm. aspiring young leader, you know, as, as you've already mm-hmm. addressed them, you know, to take courage from people that are that are wearing their heart on their convictions on their sleeve and are yeah. stepping out in faith and boldness. You know, one thing that has encouraged me is for about ten years, I would watch churches just gl- going and blowing and blowing up and. And um, like you said, I feel I feel like the house is on fire. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like I mean we've got this gender thing coming in, all this yeah. confusion. Um, abortion is another yeah. big issue. Yeah. Um, you know, all this stuff that's going on right under our noses, and nobody's saying anything. Yeah, you know, it's how how did how did Hitler get to power? One lie at a time. You know, yeah. and 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 silent pastors. Yeah, um, that just you know how do they say they said that the Jews would be. Uh, being carted off to the concentration camps and the trains that were carrying them mm-hmm. would go behind the churches. And when the trains came behind the churches at church hour, they would just sing louder, mm-hmm. you know? And, and, and I, I had this growing kind of frustration in me too, as well. Like, like something's not right, you know? And, um, and, and sometimes you can be tempted like Elijah, be like, I'm the only one. And God's like, well, I've actually got more. And we started to find that out. I feel like in 2020 with COVID, you know, there was this, I mean, literally there was this question of is church essential? And, 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 and all of us, you know, we took precautions. It was unprecedented times, you know, that kind of thing. So you have to be careful and wise as serpents, but harmless as doves. And, you know, it's not giving us spirit of fear, mm-hmm. but also power, love and a sound mind. So, you know, we try to operate with wisdom, but, but it was a, it was a moment where, where people began to let the church even decide, or sorry, let the government decide whether or not the church should open its doors. Yeah. And I, I'm, there's a preacher in Seattle that I heard him say, he said, 
He said, Caesar is not the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the church. Right. And he said, what bothers me is many Christians obviously don't understand that, but I'm scared many pastors don't even understand it. And so under that moment, I began to see a collective of growing voices of pastors that it just, it's like they finally had, had enough. They cast off restraint. They're like, you know what? If, 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 if everything can just shut its doors tomorrow and it can all be gone, I might as well preach the word about every issue and, yeah. and let God grade it and, and do that. And, and it gave me strength and encouragement to know that we're not alone in our desire to, you know, preach, preach every verse, right. Mm -hmm. But also address every issue. And some people may think it's hateful. Some people, we get accused of it being political sometimes, you know, but you have yeah. a saying, well, why don't you talk about that? Uh, yeah. You know, Satan is a, he's a thief and a liar. Yeah. And, uh, I think one of the things he did effectively was to come into the churches and convince ministers not to speak on quote, what we call political issues. Political, yeah. But things like abortion, things like how many genders are there? In right. Genesis, there's two. Yeah. Two, male two. and female. Right. That's, that's scripture and science. Yeah. Yeah. Trust right? the science. Right. Trust they the told science. Us. <laughs> so you've got abortion, you've got gender, you've got uh, the definition of marriage, Genesis uh -huh. 2, yeah. male and female, right. man and woman coming together. Uh, those are not political issues. Mm -hmm. the politics got in the lane of the church. For, yeah. Yeah. Politic. It's not the church getting in the lane of politics, right? Poli and, but a lot of people were convinced that those are quote political issues. Yeah. The the question of Israel. Yeah. The whole Bible is built. Yeah. On God's covenant with Israel. Right. Yes. Gen I mean, <laughs> it's a it's it's written about the Jewish yeah. people, about Israel, and about a Jewish Messiah. Right. And, and, yet, and Gentiles and were grafted we've in. We've got people that are that confused plan. about whether they can say anything or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that's a hot issue, but yeah. you know, we believe that God blesses those who bless Israel, and will curse those that curse Genesis Israel. Genesis twelve, right? But the point is, the enemy made those political issues where yeah. we, I think men were afraid to say anything. Yeah, yeah. Or they would be called, "Hey, you're getting into politics," when really. They're, they're major life and spiritual issues. Yes. Yeah. That, that people want to hear. They want to know what right. does the Bible say yeah. about these things? Yeah. And the Bible speaks on it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, that's, that's our opinion is, is, and not opinion. I mean, it's mm -hmm. fact, it's scripture. Sure. Some issues are not political, they're spiritual. Yeah. Abortion is child yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. You know, all throughout the Old Testament prophets, God was getting on the people because whenever they would drift away from God, they would build altars to Baal and mm -hmm. Moloch. Yeah. And then, then the way they would worship Moloch is they would take their children and they would sacrifice them mm -hmm. in flames. And they would even have people beat drums so yeah. that you couldn't hear the baby cry so that, so that the parents wouldn't feel as guilty for sacrificing their children on mm -hmm. the altar of um, Moloch. Mm -hmm. And and today, you know, we, we, we aren't afraid to say this, say, well, we don't have, you know, we don't have beating drums and Molech altars. Mm -hmm. Instead, we've got Planned Parenthood. Yeah. And you sacrifice yeah. your child on the altar of your future and your convenience. Yeah. You know, and, and we'll go a little further, you know, I mean, we don't, we're not politically partisan. We believe that, you know, left wing, right wing, the whole bird is sick. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. about being left or yeah. right. It's about being right with God. Yeah. You know, it's not right or left. It's right or wrong. It's mm -hmm. your kingdom come, your will be done on yeah. earth. You know, all those yeah. preacher cliches. It's not the donkey and the elephant, it's the lion and the mm -hmm. lamb. And and that's funny, but it's it's true. It's true. So it's not an endorsement of either party. Sure. You know, we have wicked people in both parties. There's there's all kinds of issues. But I mean, just just honestly, I mean, at the Democratic National Convention, there were buses providing abortions and vasectomies on site outside. And I have to look at that and say, that's wrong. You know? It's wrong. It's wrong. And people say, you're being political. And I'm like, I don't, if the Republicans did it, it would be wrong. Mm -hmm. If, if an independent did it, it would be wrong. It's wrong every time at all times, because the Bible says that it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, disclaimer, we like to qualify things. If, if somebody's listening to this and you've had an abortion, you mm -hmm. know, I just want to remind you that there's, yeah. there's power in the blood of Jesus to wash and redeem and make whole. And, um, but, but that doesn't change the fact that all life is precious in the eyes of God. And so, you know, there is this, there's this muzzling, it feels like spirit of, don't talk about that. Don't go there. Don't address mm -hmm. that. Um, but the, you know, 
I, I feel like now's the time we get to say something. Mm-hmm. And if we're not careful, there'll be a time we don't get to say something. There'll be a time that freedom of speech is not guaranteed. There's freedom of re- religion, worship, all these things in our country that we're supposed to be salt and light about. Um, if we're not salt and light, then we'll be, yeah. you know, cast out and walked over and so on and so forth, like Jesus said. So, yeah. Anyhow, I, so in a nutshell, those are unique issues that we feel led to speak out on. Mm-hmm. Those are unique things we feel led to say. Um, and for what it's worth, some people may criticize, mm-hmm. but um, but I feel like telling the truth in a spirit of love pleases the Lord, and it helps set people free. And, and so truth is worth being said for those purposes. Yeah. Would you agree with that? I agree. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, I one more thing on this idea of kingdom before we move on. When you say kingdom, what do you mean by that? Because some people think that they think like kingdom hall of Jehovah's Witnesses, or they think like, you know. Well, you just read through really, uh, I'm, I'm really thinking right now about from the Gospels through the mm-hmm. rest. I mean, Christ constantly talked about the kingdom. Yeah. About the kingdom. Yeah. And what is that? It's, you know, he's the king. Yeah. So the kingdom is where Jesus Christ, where he rules and reigns. Yeah. Where it's his presence and his power. To rule and reign. Yeah. And some of that has been fulfilled in his first coming, mm-hmm. but it will be uh, fulfilled uh, in, in completion when he returns. Yeah. But, uh, but it's, it's about his business. From a, on a practical level, the kingdom is uh, partnering with him to advance the things that are, that are clear, dear to his heart. Yeah. You know, whether that's, uh, missions, whether it's helping widows and orphans, what, you know, it's a wide range of things. Yeah. But, uh, but it's a focus on what does Christ want us to do rather than maybe what, yeah. what do men want us to do? Do you think <clears throat> there's a difference in kingdom? Uh, let, let's put it this way. Thinking kingdom and thinking church. Absolutely. What well, what would you say are the differences? Cause we, cause for, for, you know, for uh, context, mm-hmm. when, when God led you to plant this church, People weren't doing a lot of that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, right now there's non-denominational is the term they use. Um, we we don't really like that denomination. We don't mm-hmm. like that term because mm-hmm. that's not our heart. It's not against denominations. You were just planning a church, but um, independent fellowships, if you will, might be a better mm-hmm. way to say it. But they're that now they're popping up all over the place mm-hmm. at all yeah. times. Um, but that was kind of a new thing, and mm-hmm. so it's, there's kind of this weird, like obscure kind of you know what what are they doing over there kind of thing. But when you think kingdom, how does that relate to? Churches, non-denominational churches, the goal of the church, the role of the church, you know, um, is the kingdom the church? Is the church an agent of the kingdom? Like what, and mm-hmm. how, how, how do we think differently about that? Well, yeah, my understanding is that the, the kingdom, uh, the church is an agent of the kingdom. Okay. Yeah, that's my understanding. Um, but in a practical level, what we do is we try to uh, pray and then connect with people. Yeah that are advancing not not their little kingdoms yeah not their agendas yeah but true kingdom work yeah and so we may partner with people uh like a minister uh, a man, a Kenyan man yeah uh, that we've known now for 20 years yeah. we partner with a man there that goes out and plants churches all over right uh, uh east africa yeah or it may be uh kingdom may be Working with some of the rehabs here, yeah, where yes. people are trying to uh, get people restored to you know get get healthy and whole yeah. and restored and uh, and cross centered, yeah. And so if it's a cross centered cross centered kingdom uh, ministry, yeah, we're glad to be a part of it, yeah. And so we partner with people locally here, uh, and we partner with people on the other side of the world, yeah. Yeah, but, that's uh, awesome. And yeah. and and we celebrate what God's doing even in other denominational yeah. church expressions yeah. that are that are kingdom minded or Christ centered. I mean, there's churches yeah. of all kinds that are doing all kinds of incredible things and um would you say it takes a lot of humility to think that way? I mean, I don't, some I don't, people you know, I don't know, it's just a to me it's a simple way of thinking. Mm-hmm. It's like uh if if someone locally is is helping feed the poor or ministering to uh, the homeless, and we can yeah. help them. Yes, we help them. Yeah, uh, it doesn't matter if they're just like us. Yeah, or uh, if it's our uh, ministry. Yeah, our our ministry whatever. doesn't have to be. We don't yeah. have. We don't have to have 
uh, our own food bank or yeah. this or that. Yeah. Uh, when there's other people doing it very well. Yeah. That we can help them, whether it's uh, financially or through service or yeah. things like that. Yeah. But uh, it's to me, it's, it's spiritual, but very practical. Yeah. So your your initial vision was a church that embraces the broader kingdom of God, not just sure. our own personal mm-hmm. agenda assignment mm-hmm. uh, that partners with others to make a difference um, beyond our church walls, but in yeah. the kingdom. Yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. So we spent a lot of time talking about why plant a church and what makes the river unique? Um, so here's the question: twenty six years, almost twenty seven. Yeah. Um, why? Uh, why a transition, and why now? Well, it's God's timing. Uh, I just know it's just time, and uh, I feel like. I've done what I was supposed to do. I'm, as we know, we're, I'm not quitting or I'm not retiring. Right. But I feel like uh, my season as a lead, as the lead pastor, uh, is coming to a conclusion. Yeah. And uh, I'm very grateful and thankful, and yet I'm also very excited about about uh, what God has uh, for the river for you and and uh, for the for the immediate future, but also, uh, you know, looking ahead. Yeah. But just mainly it's just time I've known, I've, you know, you know me pretty well and I don't, I don't make snap <laughs> decisions. I don't no. get any hurry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we've known, uh, for a while that this was coming, didn't know exactly when, but, yeah. but, uh, we've sought the Lord on it and, and, um, uh, and it's all coming together. Yeah. And um, it's the simple answer is uh, God's timing. Yeah. You, it's encouraging to hear you say mm-hmm. that. And the reason I ask is because I know that if anybody has a question, that might be mm-hmm. it. And, and this is, mm-hmm. I guess, my, a better way to say it. You're 64, right? Yes. Going on 65. I'm 32, going on 33. <laughs> uh, so, it, so it's good timing. I mean, yeah. how old were you when you first planted, uh, or sorry, you took your first pastor in Pennsylvania? Uh, 26. 26. Mm-hmm. And so you were, how old were you when you started pastoring First Baptist? In 30. 30? Mm-hmm. Okay. So similar age range. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a few years older than 30 or mm-hmm. 26. Um, but at 64 and you're not retiring, uh, mm-hmm. our intention is, you know, what we've made clear to everybody, you're going to stay on staff. You're going to continue to yeah. do pastoral care and teach mm-hmm. and preach some and lead and, and on, honestly, just pretty much whatever you want to do. Uh, but, uh, but over the next, at, you know, at least foreseeable five to six years and, and longer, you know, mm-hmm. as long as you're fruitful and effective and you want to keep rolling. But, um, but you know, it, it would be so typical. Mm-hmm. It would be so typical that if you know you're not retiring mm-hmm. to just keep being the lead pastor. So, so what, about, what about this feels like timing to you? I guess you said you, you felt like your time as the lead pastor would come yeah. to a close. It's God's timing, uh, and I, I just believe it's time for, uh, in all this, it's, it's time for you to take that next step and, and, and be the lead, the lead minister here. Uh, I believe that with all my heart, and I have total confidence in it. I don't have any doubt about it, none. And uh, I'm thankful for it. And yeah. um, um, I know I keep saying it, but it's just, it's all about the timing of things. Yeah. You know, you, you gave a little bit of your history here, uh, how you came here and, yeah, and, and you probably didn't know you would stay, you know, yeah. uh, you probably didn't know. I didn't know if you would stay, but I'm glad you, you know, y'all have decided to. And yeah. And um, I believe it's right. And, yeah. um, and, um, so it's to me just a it's really a smooth transition. Yeah, you know, in a lot of a lot of churches, when uh, a minute a pastor or minister uh, retires or, or moves away, uh, churches have to go and consult with people, get resumes, and yeah, and go that route. And it's a blessing that we're raising up, uh, you know, spiritual sons and daughters here. Yeah, uh, yeah, all across all across this church, whether it's in like this right here. Yeah. Our youth ministry. Right. Uh, children, um, uh, worship. Yeah. Uh, there is a culture here of, of raising up people where we don't have to go outside. 
Yeah. We're not against that. But yeah. We don't have to. Right. Because we're raising them up. Yeah. We're discipling them. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's, you know, been your path. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's just time. It's time uh, to take it and run with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Moses had Joshua. Mm -hmm. Elijah had Elisha. Paul had Timothy. You know, we see that in the scripture and, um, and we've seen that played out here, you mm -hmm. know, um, I'm excited about the future, but I, I'm really just more impressed with your humility because it would be so easy to just say, well, as long as I'm here, I'll be the lead guy. Um, but I, I look at it like, uh, I was told by somebody one time, it's kind of like a, a baton race, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a relay race. Yeah. And, and there's that moment where both hands are on the baton in exchange and, and, Knowing, knowing when it's time to hand it off as opposed to I'll run a little longer or something mm -hmm. and, and also not handing it off too soon where somebody's not running fast enough yet. Right. That's how the race gets lost. Mm -hmm. and, and it is a generational transfer of anointing and um, resources and, and, and so on and so forth. And the Bible says one generation shall praise your works to the next. That's what I was telling mm -hmm. the young adults Sunday night about. And um, that's been such an exciting thing. You know, I came here 15, mm -hmm. baptized at 16 at mm -hmm. this church. Uh, Grew up in the youth mm -hmm. at this church, went to uh, ministry school, did uh, Destiny Leadership Institute for two years while I served on staff here as an intern, uh, did this youth for seven years, uh, like I said, assistant for three. Um, and, you know, it was a couple years mm -hmm. ago that we started talking about the possibility of this. Yeah. Because um, the irony is Evelyn and I thought, oh, we might go, you know, here and plant a church or this or that. And I remember you asking me, you know, what would you think about taking my place one day? and you know, I, I couldn't say I hadn't thought of it at some point, mainly because of our age difference. It's like, well, I mean, you know, you look around and look for somebody else. And, but at the same time, it was never, it was never, you know, it's not mine to think about. Mm -hmm. So I never really paid much attention to it. I just thought maybe we'll go plan something, do something. And so when we began to talk about it, I went and prayed through it and, um, fasting and prayer, seeking counsel mm -hmm. and advice. And it just became overwhelmingly clear to me that, the uniqueness of the opportunity you, you've described the uniqueness of the opportunity to pass it off to mm -hmm. somebody that by God's grace you yep. raised up and mentor. We've been together for that long. I've been able to see your heart, get your value, mm -hmm. see how to Paul, how Paul say, you know what I teach and how I live. Yeah. I've seen you navigate decisions, discussions, you know, how you do things, how you treat waitresses with kindness, how you manage your finances, how you love on people and give them opportunity, how you'll rebuke, correct, exhort, encourage. And I've been able to mm -hmm. witness that. And in the same uh, way, I've been able to uh, glean from that. Um, but I, the the overwhelming counsel I got from uh, Pastor Joel, Dr. Brassfield, and yourself, you know, and and just my wife, honestly, my wife knew it from the beginning. She's like, oh, yeah, this is what we're supposed to do. What are we going to do? Like, leave these people? I'm like, well, no, I kind you know, hopefully, I yeah. kind of hope that someone would come with us. But, you know, I wouldn't take them. You, know, you don't take people, but if God sends them. Yeah. But, um, but no, I, I began to think about it. And so I tell the group Sunday night, I'm like, the unique opportunity to love on, nurture, pray with, shepherd, pour into, disciple a young group of people in the same church. And now they're in so many worship, you know, leadership positions, whether it's, you know, preschool or children's or worship or media, you know, uh, Michael's, you know, my assistant. Mm -hmm. and, and to have that, and they're looking to me and Evelyn for leadership, it, it's like, that's a unique opportunity Yeah, that, that truly truly we get to continue doing this all together. So we're not, you're not leaving. You're not retiring where we talk about, it's like a cockpit in a plane. We're switching seats mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm, I'm excited about it. And I guess I'm most excited about it because you're excited about it. And I'm excited that we're I'm doing excited. it together. And I know it's right. And I'm excited about, you know, being here and, and teaching. Yes. I love to teach and, uh, and I look forward to, Really, in my first church, I was more into the you know, <laughs> more into the pastoral care, and and I I want to get back more into that in these uh these next few years. Yeah, but uh, I believe um that what God ha has led me to do here has been to lay a foundation. That's what I believe. Yeah, and uh, I believe that uh. The next, the next year and the next years ahead, that uh, you will be able to build on this and take it places it's never been. I really believe that. I believe the Lord has. I feel a sense of fulfillment, gratitude, for humility in that. Yeah, that absolutely. I've done what I was supposed to do. Yeah, I've passed it off. You talked about passing a baton. You know, in, in a track meet, 
that's about timing. Yeah. All in track, that's all about timing. Yeah. And uh, so going back to that, but that's what it is. But I, I believe that uh, the church is really, really set up now yeah. to, to take off. Yeah. Uh, like it's places it's never been. Yeah. And I'm for that. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be behind you and, and everyone else fanning the flame. Yeah. And, uh, and cheering, you know, cheering you on and, and hoping that it, it becomes more than what I could have ever imagined. Yeah. But, um, uh, that's what I see. Praise the Lord. Well, I appreciate your mm-hmm. confidence. I can't say it's not a little pressure, but it's <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, it's 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 I not. That, I know that y'all trust the Lord in it, and uh, yeah, and uh, you've got uh, you've got several good people. I know. Yeah. Uh, not just here locally, but in in other states, uh, godly men that speak into you. Yeah. And uh, that that will help. Yeah. And uh, and help navigate through hard times and, uh, yeah. And also through the great times. Yeah. And by God's grace, hopefully if Evelyn and I do a Mm -hmm. half decent job (laughs) that maybe, maybe if it's more fruitful or bigger or, you know, whatever, whatever adjective, you know, or or word you use to describe the future, Mm -hmm. then, then it has been prayerfully in the course of time. Should the Lord tarry, someone else will come in and go forward as well. You know, uh, one one thing, Jared. I was as you're saying that. Uh, I, I showed you a picture recently of the first sign that we ever. Yeah. You know, when we first started, we we had a uh, the original sign was from Ephesians three. I think it's twenty or twenty one. Yeah. Uh, where it talks about God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above, above. all that we can ask or think. Right. According to the or imagine. Yeah. yeah. And and so that that was from the beginning what we believed. That God is able to do more than we can. Yeah. And that's what I still believe. Yeah. That God is able. Yeah. To do exceedingly abundantly above. Yeah. All. That we, and that, that verse is in the context of doing it through the church. Right. Which, that was at the church at Ephesus, but right. through the local church. Yes. And he wants the church. Jesus is not building anything else on this earth. He's not building other organizations. Yeah. Uh, Schools, businesses, yeah. banks. He's building the church. Yeah. And he wants the local church to be a lampstand. I mean, a, a spiritual house lampstand shining brightly uh, in these last days. Yes, sir. As we await the return of the king. Amen. And I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Both, both the future and the future return of the king. Yeah. Well, th- those were my last questions is what are you looking forward to for the church and personally, but it sounds like you answered it. You have anything else you want to share? I'm really looking forward to the fall weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's tricking us out right now. I love, I love autumn and I'm looking forward to uh, yeah. getting out Well, it's and uh, enjoying the fall weather, the change of seasons. Yes, sir. Amen. And the winds of change mm-hmm. are in the air. So one last thing. Yeah. Um, this Sunday, September 15th. Yes. Is your last sermon as the founding and, well, not founding. I mean, it's your last sermon as the current senior pastor yeah. of the River Church. Um, and, you know, uh, I guess if you want to mm-hmm. say anything about it, I'd like for you to say something. But if not, I just want everybody to know, listen and come because yeah. it's going to be precious. Yeah, I just, it's going to be I wish I could say this about every message, but it would definitely be from the heart. Yeah. From, from, uh, from my heart to the, to the church. Yeah. It's going to be a message of appreciation and gratitude. And yeah, I'm just very grateful. Yeah. That, you know, that I've had this privilege yeah. to serve in this capacity. Yeah. And not, I'm not done, but I do know it, it's shifting. Sure. You know, certainly. My, my responsibilities are shifting. So there is a finality or conclusion yeah. to this chapter. And I'm excited about it, yeah. but, uh, but I, I want to share my heart uh, with uh, the body this Sunday. And so if you're out there and you're looking for a place, uh, a church that loves the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, and loves uh, people. Come on out. Uh, that, that remind, you know, a lot of stories we could tell, but I remember one time I was in the uh, elevator in UAMS. Uh-huh. I was down there visiting someone, and 
someone said something about me being a pastor is full of people. And they, yeah. And a, and a lady said, Hey, what, what kind of church is that? And I said, well, I hope it's a Jesus loving church. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I pray that's what we've been. Yes, you know, sir. that's, that's my heart. I pray that, that we have been a Jesus loving church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I believe we have, and prayerfully will continue to be. Yes, sir. And so Sunday, September 15th, this week, your last sermon as the lead pastor at the yep. river, it's going to be incredible. And then the following Sunday, September 22nd, is what we're calling Legacy Sunday. Yes. And it's going to be a special service. We have guests coming in to be a part of that. And um, somewhere in there, you'll pray for me and yeah. we'll change over. And I yes, might sir. say a few things too. And and everyone's invited. Yeah. I don't know how, you know, we're going to have to make room. We're going to figure it out. But yeah. we already know a lot of people are coming. And and again, Sunday, yeah. September 15th, you're invited to hear Pastor Keith's sermon. Sunday, September 22nd, Legacy Sunday. We'd love for you to come be a part of what God's doing. So, yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, I thank mean, you for your time, Pastor yes, Keith. I know I've, this is different, but it's been a yeah, big blessing. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Amen. Amen.